The world of medicine has seen its share of miracle cures, from the polio vaccine to heart transplants, but all past achievements may pale in comparison to the work of Dr. Alice Crippen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. What's it all? So, Dr. Crippen, give it to me in a nutshell. Well, the premise is quite simple. Um, take something designed by nature and reprogram it to make it work for the body rather than against it. You're talking about a virus? Indeed, yes, in this case, the measles um, virus, which has been engineered at a genetic level to be helpful rather than harmful. Um, and I, and I find the best way to describe it is if you, can, if you can imagine your body as a highway and you picture the virus as a very fast car um, being driven by a very bad man, imagine the damage that that car could cause. Mm. But then if you replace that man with a cop, the picture changes, and that's essentially what we've done. Now, how many people have you treated so far? Well, we've had 10,009 um, clinical trials in humans so far. And how many are cancer-free? 10,009. So you have actually cured cancer? Yes, yes. Yes, we have. Hello, I'm Val Shinobi. This is the Louisville, Kentucky I Am Legends Challenge with CDDA Zombies. During the day, the zombies are sluggish and weak, seeking refuge in the shadows. But as the sun sets, they become faster and stronger, relentlessly hunting for the next meal. Among them are special mutations, adding another layer of danger to an already perilous situation. This is Miles Barrow, park ranger and survivor, the hero of our story. Welcome to Louisville, Kentucky, where the dead now walk the earth. Our story begins in the Central Park, the closest thing to an oasis you'll find in the city. As the outbreak spread and the people tried to escape, the population thinned out around here, making it a relatively safe place to lay low. But the city is far from safe. Resources are scarce and the city's infrastructure has collapsed. The water and power have been shut off for rages. The streets are littered with the remains of those who couldn't escape in time, and the city's landmarks now serve as graveyards. We must scavenge for resources and find shelters which struggle to survive in this world where death is always lurking in the shadows. We'll take stock of available supplies at the park. Everything is useful, but we can only carry so much with us. Those creatures will eventually come searching for food, and before they do, we need to be prepared. We need a place to stash our loot and lay our heads at night, where the mutations won't sniff us out. We'll stand a much better chance of seeing the next sunrise if we can keep the fight on our terms, during the day when the sun grants us passage. Bags quickly become overbearing when you try to bring the whole world with you stash it in a relatively safe place. We can always come back later after we found our permanent home. A beer from the bar for the road. The last. We'd reuse the bottle to transport water since we don't have another option yet. Inside the old dilapidated shed, a horde of supplies awaited our use. A hammer, specifically. As well as many welding supplies, we will be able to make use of later in our home defense. In these early days, we'll only have a few choices of directions we can go. It'd be wise not to wander too far from the park. The water and land here provide crucial life-sustaining nourishment. Decidedly, we'll head northwest into the train station. Trains were one of the first utilities they shut down when they were locking down the city. Hopefully it hasn't become a nest already. There's a tower we can see from the park on the horizon that's been calling to us. Having an eagle's eye on the ground might be the key to outsmarting the mutations. We'll scavenge what we can along the way, 
A beautiful duffel bag awaits for us perched on an old work truck abandoned, along with some simple first aid supplies. After transferring all of our supplies from one bag to another, we'll send over the wall and into the train yard. What lay before us was an overgrown, unkept, but empty yard. Not a soul stirred under the calm May sun. We'll help ourselves to whatever we can carry from those who will no longer carry it. Boots and gloves are a great blessing in this city. We came to the shed at the far end of the yard. All seemed quiet enough. All locked up. Except for the last window on the side of the building. We let ourselves in since no one was home. A machete laid out on the lower shelf. We'll gladly take that for our own. We took mental note of the arsenal of tools in the shed while we were there. The task of securing the tower before nightfall remained, so we closed up shop and made off in a hurry. In the wrong direction. A quick turnaround or two later and we'd be there. Greeted by a sleeper, we backed away to regain our composure. After a quick breather, we'll make our way in slowly as not to awaken them. Sleepers will consider dispatch. Once you've alerted a nest, they all tend to wake up and move as one. It's like they're connected somehow. The key was to kill them all before they could wake up the others. With hands, we claimed the tower for our own. There's still plenty of time left of daylight, so after disposing of the corpses through the window, we'll take the time to check the furniture and the nearby lots. Unexpectedly, we find an absolute beautiful hoard of survival utility. A gun, but no ammo. A gas can, and a barrel of gas. Because the contagion broke out so quickly, looters never really got to hit the city. Other than the hordes of mutants you can find inside their nests, the city was almost like a time capsule of what life was like before the catastrophe. Come around to the train houses on the yonder side of the yard. A dark, cold place barely filtered by sunlight. We steal ourselves for the possibility that it's become a nest. small group of sleepers quickly dispatched, but it left us uncomfortable that the mutants weren't far behind. We were starting to see more of them near the center than ever before, a sign of the changing days. There was one of them. 
mutations. It was getting late in the evening, and we didn't want to risk anything. So we decided to make our way back to the tower. We'll blockade the stairwell and make ourselves comfortable. With the rest of the daylight available to us, we decided to clean up all the vegetation around the tower. Maybe it'd help against all the angst of being the only one left in the city. Plus, dinner tastes better in a clean environment. With a glorious view of the surroundings, we sat comfortable, knowing we'd see any problems coming. We chowed down on some evaporated milk, beef jerky, and chips, in order to maintain a healthy weight. And then we'll fall asleep staring out at the setting sun. The tower was ours, and with the new day came new responsibilities. We needed to really secure the tower now and make it immune to the hostilities of the mutations. We'll head over to the commercial area and check for the supplies. The map showed a possible warehouse not too far from the terrain yard. Terrain yard? Train yard. The train yard, yeah. We smashed the window to bits, because we'll be placing a rope ladder there. We forgot to grab some sheet ropes on the way to the tower. So we need to make sure to grab some while we're out. Take a peek inside to see if they've nested in these buildings, but they're empty. We don't want to waste time on restaurants. We will stop to check the vehicles that we find. The second one has a key. When we check the condition, it's a little rough, but we have gas, so it is a potential vehicle to drive us around. At the back of the restaurant, a group of propane grills hangs out together. This would make for an easy way to cook, or an extra propane tank for other needs. Either way, we'll mark it off on the map and move along for now. On the other side of the restaurant, a small gas station. An old red car sat outside, unlocked. The key lay still in the ignition. No gas, but she seemed in good condition. With a strange hoard in her trunk. We won't ask questions. Inside the old gas station, there wasn't much around. Some old non-perishable snacks long forgotten, and a pack of smokes. Some cereal and drinks. back of the gas station, a warning from the past about that which is common knowledge now. Do not go out at night. We leave over the fence towards our goal of the warehouse. Everything seems intact, a good sign for us. We'll check the vehicle before heading over to it. All locked. But we found something else. A small scouting nest, still active during the morning hours. They must have just moved in and are still redecorating. We'll mark it off on our map and head off quickly. Ground floor seems locked up tight. So we'll climb the fire escape to the roof and see if we can let ourselves in.
with luck, there was a lapse of judgment from the security before the apocalypse. They left the roof door unlocked, let ourselves in quietly, and to our glorious joy, the building is completely abandoned. They haven't nested here yet, but for how long, one couldn't be sure. We quickly grab up everything we deem useful. Boxes of nails, crowbars, sledgehammers, gun cleaning kits. And to top it off, we found a wonderful hand truck to haul everything away with. Though we've overloaded ourselves and the bag, so now we needed to make several hops back and forth to get everything home across the fences. Instead of doing another hopathon, we decided for a more straightforward approach. We'll bash a hole straight through the fence and call it an entrance for our new home. With our goal of grabbing sheet ropes accomplished, we lay out our glorious loot and then throw down our new ladder. And take a well deserved break until next time. Hello. We return to Louisville, Kentucky, as the protagonist returns to his home. We stockpile and bag after we stopped off over at the park to grab the stash supplies. Now that we had a place to call our own, we could begin hoarding vast amounts of loot we might never use. We started with the bare essentials, a water container, a few cans of food. It was getting late in the evening, so we'll devour a small dinner to help maintain our weight. Delicious beef jerky and canned corned beef. And then we'll get an early start to our sleep schedule. Our current plan involved fortifying our home leveling up our carpentry skills and acquiring the all-useful transportation, all in due time. We'll start the day with half a bottle of orange soda and then be on our way. We plan to head for the park again to begin our carpentry business. On the way, we randomly decide to weigh ourselves down and grab an entire jug of gasoline that we won't need until much, much later. Our tower needed a new ground floor if we were to sleep comfortably at night. What lay before us was the key to our comfort, free lumber. We quickly helped ourselves to the vast quantities of wooden furniture left over from the old days, a heaping pile of experience for us to take for our own. We quickly ascended to the status of wood chipper before noon. We'll finish off this morning's orange soda for lunch, and then continue on our carpentry ascension. After a hard day of laboring away, we break for a smoke and gather up the storage we'll be taking home. We shouldn't have placed that back down. Remembering the old boxes in the back we saw during deconstruction, we quickly run back in and snatch them up before heading home. There was still plenty of sunlight left in the day, and we wanted to finish fortification before the sun set. The war with stairs never ends. We take our muddy sledgehammer to them over and over, until they are nothing but shards of dust in the wind. No repurposing, no leftovers just destruction. In its place, we'll produce something spectacular. Something we advanced non-mutants can utilize. Sheet rope ladders. We build out a fence for our ladder, board by board. And then, with the ringing of steel on brick, they signified safety from the world. The tower was our beacon of normalcy in a world turned upside down. We'll smash a hole in this chaotic mess and begin to build it new. We head back upstairs to grab a sheet rope or two from our collection. We wanted multiple ways to get up and down the tower in case something should break our ropes. While we were away, we decided to don a new look. A yellow poncho with our name on it beckoned us to wear it, and we answered the call.
with a safe tower to call our own, and beautiful colors flooding across the sky, we decided to wait on our new balcony and watch as the sun washed out across the horizon. We wanted to know exactly what time things would get ugly. It seemed that time was about 10 p.m. We take note and then quickly head off for bed. We had another busy day set up for tomorrow. In the morning, a quick spaghetti breakfast to help maintain our healthy weight. Then we'll pack up and be on our way to get the car. In our foolish rush, we forget the essential ingredient to obtaining a vehicle, the gas. With the sound of ignition, the whole of the city began to open up to us. The possibilities for our survival extended beyond the local perimeter and city blocks. We just needed to carefully thread the needle of the fence to properly procure our investment. We'll utilize the barrel of gas to fill up our new carriage, and then prepare it for our next job. We were planning to open up the fences for easier driving in and out. We take note of the condition of the Nyla. 69% engine life, nice. A fully charged battery, a little worse for wear. The tires and brakes were unreliable at best, and the muffler seemed to only amplify the sounds coming from the engine. Regardless, it would be a suitable vesticle of our convenience. After the fence remodel work, we'll gather all of our planks from the park. By the end of the day, we plan to have a suitable base of operations to begin excavation of the old world and securing our place in its future. going too fast, or just the brakes being unreliable. Some questions just have no answers. Thankfully, we came out unharmed. The car seemed to be undamaged as well. We weren't worried for a second. Upon inspection, the engine and battery didn't take any damage. It was just the hood of the car that took the front of it. After arriving back home at the tower, we quickly unload the vehicle's contents onto the floor and clean out the trunk for future projects. Space was definitely going to be a problem in the future. With our first stack of planks, we'll build out our patio around the second floor. We'll need to build out the landing zone so our ropes from the top room will land on our balcony instead of on the ground floor. A simple protection so we don't rope into the unknown. We didn't have enough planks from the first load, so we'll head back to the park to grab the remainder. A couple benches that we forgot about out behind the main building, and a table in the shed.
After a grueling day of work, we stand tall, surveying our next challenge with a stern focus. Our eyes gleam with determination as we puff on our cigarette, the smoke billowing up and obscuring our reflection in the cold glass. With our base secured, weapons at hand, and transportation obtained, we're prepared to take the city by storm and then cover the full extent of the mutation's grip on the metropolis. Our enemies will tremble at the mere mention of our names. We won't rest until every last inch of the city is under our control. And when the final battle is won and the smoke clears, we will be there. Hello. We return to our hero in the midst of a restless night. We gaze out into the ephemeral darkness, watching as the shadows dance in the moonlight. Since we can't sleep, we clear an item off our bucket list. Water. Despite our relative safety around our tower, we can't shake the feeling of unease that comes with venturing outside at night. We know that gathering the water is a necessary task to ensure our survival. We utilize these restless hours to do so. We cannot shake the feeling of being watched our every move scrutinized by unseen eyes. It was a simple task, but the darkness and eerie silence still made for a haunting stage. But returning home with a glorious hoard of water felt like a good end of the night. But the night was far from over. Sleep eluded us. The adrenaline from our excursion still coursing through our veins. We turned to exercise, pushing our bodies to the brink with burpees and squats when that still doesn't bring us the rest we so desperately crave. We turn to the bottle, downing its contents in only a few swift swigs. Finally exhausted from the physical exertion, left with only the sounds of our labored breathing, we drift off into a fitful sleep. the sunlight broke across the horizon. It was barely to be seen. The dark clouds loomed overhead, and a thick fog had settled on the ground. We smoked a cigarette to calm our nerves before taking off into the mist. Our plan today was simple. We were going to use our transportation to get an eye on the mutation's movements. While we're out, we'll stop at the grill party and help ourselves to all of its contents. A hidden tree laughs at our futile struggle to take shortcuts. We'll have to remember to make smarter decisions in the future. tanks and snow, we make off in an earnest. We'll check to the north side of our location first. There was a lot of buildings there, which meant a lot of potential nests. Perfect place to begin the day. A bunch of untouched storefronts covered in years of growth from abandonment. We spot a couple of vehicles and decide to stop. A spare tire in the trunk of the car is a valuable asset. We ultimately decide to double check all of the stores. Just because a window isn't smashed in, doesn't mean the mutations haven't found another way to nest inside. All cleared on this side of the street, so we set off for the next block. The dark, overgrown furniture store seemingly untouched by the mutation. We'll take this opportunity to try and bring home a mattress. 
Anything would be better than sleeping on that chair again. We failed when taking them all apart, splitting each mattress in half. Amazing. Unheard of. Mutations were walking around in the middle of the day. Were they evolving? Or was this just because of the overcast weather and heavy fog? Our heart pounded heavy against our chest as we stared down the alleyway, watching as the distant shadows waltzed through the dancing mist. We decided to investigate the rest of the block. Only to find they've started to nest in the mechanic's shop. So many mutations gathered in one place. With the sound of shattering glass, we decided to move along. This area now belonged to them and we didn't feel the need to contest it with a horde at the ready. through, deeper into the city. Information was going to be vital moving forward. So many of them stood still, wavering in the weak, flickering sunlight. Were they smart enough to try and overcome their weaknesses? We've had enough of watching them. The north side was completely overrun. The creatures seem to be forcing mutations upon themselves by battling their weaknesses on weaker conditioned days. The front of the vehicle took an absolute beating from how many of the creatures threw themselves in front of the car. We take pause to check everything, but it seems it's mostly just superficial damage. We jart down what we think we know about the infestation on the north side. exactly in the opposite direction. Just north of the park is a giant parking lot. A huge fuel tanker grips our attention from the side of the road. We'll spend our afternoon in this lot. Maybe we'll find something useful. But at minimum, we might be able to fix up the damage we did to the vehicle up on the north side expedition. Big, good conditioned, but empty. We'll waste no further time with it and get to trying to strip the vehicles of the things that we can. This mostly consisted of lights, the hood, and mufflers. We didn't have the tools and knowledge to do the other components at this time. But this vehicle graveyard was a valuable resource for the future. We gladly grab any items of interest while we're peeking around on the inside. After trying to remove ours and completely destroying it, we were able to successfully install a decently conditioned one. Most of the damage from the Northside Expedition was now gone. At home, we find a scout waiting for us in the evening rays of light. A bad sign that the Northside infestation might be closer than we expected. The sun's gotten a lot stronger as the clouds washed away. This one seems to have gotten stuck too far away from a safe place to hide. 
we liberate him of his property, and then we'll move along. The disturbing day of new information has come to an end. We quickly drop off what we can, and then we'll head to bed. Our mission has changed from exploring our possible surroundings and marking out the map. We must now begin exploring our direct perimeter. A new day dawns, and when we finished with breakfast, it was already pretty late in the morning. But it was darker than normal. Heavy clouds floated overhead again. An ill omen. How far would the mutations try to push during these times? We'll head to the largest building on the train yard. Before we even arrive, our suspicions are confirmed. We're starting with the assumption this entire building is already theirs. We'll begin on the outside of the building, killing off the stragglers where we can. With any luck, we'll be able to clear out the building by nightfall. This building is a lot bigger than we imagined it was. And they are definitely here. Apparently, this is going to take a very long time, so we decided to park the car and shut her down to conserve on fuel. It's a bit less safe in emergency, all things considered. But conservation is the nature of survival. We step into the old train station, now reduced to nothing but rusted metal and broken glass. A massive structure loomed over everything, its shadow stretching out across the dilapidated tracks. In its shadow lay something far more terrifying than death. The mutations were everywhere. The station was completely filled with them. We could hear their moans echoing off the metal walls, the claws scratching at the rusted metal. We had to take a step back and light up a cigarette to calm the nerves before we ventured back inside. heart attack later, and everything seemed to be fine.
Hello. We return to our hero, their life hanging by a thread after narrowly escaping death. The deadly mutation had gone unnoticed, leaving us scrambling for survival. With quick reflexes and a bit of carfu, we manage to pull ourselves back from the brink of the void. As we take a moment to catch our breath, we're reminded of the fragility of life and the importance of staying vigilant in the face of danger but we refuse to be defeated by our near-death experience. With a renewed sense of purpose and a steely determination, our hero rushed home to nurse their terminal wounds. We'll shave and clean the wounded areas, taking great care to ensure a healthy recovery. Although the mutation gained the upper hand this time, we're now mentally prepared for the future. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and we're determined to learn and grow from this experience. We'll train and educate ourselves to reinforce survival skills to stay one step ahead of any future threats. As we catch our breath and took a moment to regroup, we knew that it was time to strategize. The next week would be all about taking it easy, avoiding no nesting areas and hunkering down in our tower come nightfall. It was time to focus on our daily training regimen and absorb as much information as possible, taking advantage of the small stockpile of food that we had on hand. As the pre-dawn darkness shrouded us, we set about repairing our clothing, patching up any holes with the limited knowledge of needlework at our disposal. Despite our lack of skills, we were determined to fortify our garments in preparation for the future encounters. Moonlight cast an eerie glow on our efforts. In times of adversity, it was crucial to be resourceful and resolute. We paced anxiously back and forth inside our tower, our minds still reeling from the events of the afternoon. Like phantoms, the mutations materialized before us, only to be vanquished in an instant from our blade, dissipating away into nothingness. In the shadows, we trained away. When the sun broke out behind the storm, we took a chance to recover what was lost. We'll sneak back into the station and try to retrieve our lost machete. On one of the victim's bodies, we find a pistol and a box of ammo. We appreciate the special delivery. Fresh supply of ammunition in hand, we can now focus on honing our reloading skills. We decided to incorporate it into our daily training regimen, which already included 30 minutes of squats, burpees, sit-ups, and push-ups each. We aim to devote up to an hour each day to practicing our reloading and other essential skills. With the remaining time, we would tackle various tasks to keep our haven in order.
storm clouds loomed in place of the usual morning sun, casting a dreary pall over our daily routine. The physical strain of training hit us like relentless waves. We washed down our spaghetti breakfast with a bottle of wine, seeking both sustenance and relief for our aching muscles. The day's agenda called for a trip to the furniture store in search of better sleeping arrangements. Even the barest improvements over our current office chair would be a welcome change. As we arrived at the furniture store, a pang of dismay hit us as we realized we had forgotten our tools back at the tower in a drunken haze. We drive home in a hurry to rectify the situation so that we could continue our search for a suitable bed. We had been to this store before and we knew exactly what we were looking for. An orange bunk bed that would suffice for now. As we browsed the store, we couldn't resist the allure of a black chair and matching couch. But in our haste, we ended up destroying the couch in the process of claiming it. With a sense of disappointment, we resolved to return to the tower and make do with what we had. Our comforts may be limited, but at least we had a new bed to rest on, and a chair to read in. On our journey home, we stopped at the small block of buildings that we had deemed safe from the mutations. One storefront caught our eye with its glass displays and fully stocked shelves. We didn't realize until we were inside that this was a toy store. The discovery was a glorious opportunity for us, and we quickly gathered up all the happy tree friends we could find. They would be a perfect addition to make our tower feel more like home. We also found a super soaker, which will surely be of vital importance later. Ascending the staircase, we came upon a series of offices, one after the other, each appearing more barren and uninviting than the last. Yet we didn't leave empty-handed, as we took note of the storage areas within, perfect for future carpentry endeavors and opportunity to develop our skills further. In one of the offices, we spotted a microwave and water jug lying abandoned, which we gladly added to our growing collection of supplies. Truly a beautiful addition to our arsenal. The high-powered soaker boasted a medium ammo capacity that would give us an edge in any water fight. We strategically arranged our newly acquired companions throughout the house, each finding a comfortable spot to call their own. The day had been a fruitful one with success in our endeavors. After completing our daily training, we'll retire for the night, exhausted and satisfied with our progress. As our eyelids fluttered open, the darkness of the early morning greeted us once again. We could see the ominous storm clouds rolling across the horizon in the distance. The air was crisp and cool. With our first cigarette of the day in hand, we savored the moment, letting the nicotine course through our veins. Today was the day we would finally remove the bandages from our wounds. We braced ourselves for the pain, but to our surprise, everything seemed to have healed perfectly. We inspected the affected areas closely, searching for any signs of contagion from the mutations. But to our relief, we found none. 
were we just lucky to have escaped unscathed? Or perhaps there was something special about us that made us immune to the virus? It was a question that only time could answer. For now, we acknowledged our lucky break to still be alive and not one of them. As our food supply continued to dwindle, we faced a pressing issue with only two cans and seven sticks of beef jerky left. It was clear that we couldn't sustain our daily training without replenishing our provisions. We looked to the southwest, where a cluster of urban houses stood. It had been years since the contagion outbroke, and fresh food was scarce. We'll scour the area for any long-forgotten stashes of canned goods that might still be hidden away. We soared through the train yard, looking for scouts before we head off on our adventure. Upon our arrival, we found the environment seemingly untouched by the mutations. There was no sign of them nesting or breaching the area yet. Although the houses were scarce in resources, we struck it lucky and found a decent supply of canned goods that would last us a couple of weeks. On top of that, we managed to get our hands on a really nice bed that we can actually lie down in for video purposes. Splendid. Distracted by the excitement of our newly found food supply, we accidentally smashed the front windshield of our car as we crashed into a fence. We couldn't let this go. We needed to extract revenge later by destroying that fence, and creating a bigger opening for the car. Back at home, we made a spot for our luxurious new bed and took the time to try on some new clothes. Our current ones were patchy and dirty, hardly fit for civilized use. In the park, we swing our axes with precision, chopping down a gathering of towering trees with power and determination. Though uncertain of what we'll use the logs for, we're focused on honing our carpentry skills to reach level 6 and eventually ascend to the tower's roof. Having an excess of logs and lumber at our disposal can only serve us well in the long run. Our skills were already decently leveled up, with level 2 in fishing, trapping, and foraging level 2 in aiming, and level 3 in reloading. Our carpentry was almost at level 4, and we had level 1 in axe skills, nimble, and sprinting, as well as level 5 in fitness and strength. We engorged ourselves on the surplus. We feasted on a, a delectable meal of bean, vegetable beef jerky salad, and even canned pineapples to maintain our current weight. Following our luxurious dinner, we spent hours engrossed in reading, delving into topics such as the art of cooking, smithing, and treating wounds. Eventually, we grew tired and rested our weary heads. Until next time. Hello. The world as we knew it had crumbled to ruins. The remnants of a once thriving civilization reduced to nothing more than rubble and ash. Yet in this desolate wasteland, hope still flickered like a dying flame burning brightest in the heart of our hero. We emerged from our makeshift shelter in the train yard's control tower. The spring breeze carried on it a scent of decay and destruction, a grim reminder of the mutations ever encroaching. With each stride, our resolve grew stronger, fueled by the memory of what we had lost and the visions of what we could still achieve. Our goal moving forward was to master the art of carpentry, to learn to build stairs, water collector barrels, and even entire fields of food and compost anchored into the sky by our hammer. 
Through our mastery of this craft, we knew we could secure a future for ourselves. So with unwavering resolve, we set out on a journey to shape the world around us, to leave our mark on a world transformed by catastrophe. We start at the local chicken diner, and lay waste to the dining hall. Like a well-oiled machine, we broke down anything and everything that we could. Counters, tables, chairs, and even doors. When we finished here, we'll take a quick stop at home to drop off the water jug that we obtained from the back rooms, and then head over to the small block of shops we previously secured. visited by an impatient scout, rudely interrupting our grind. Having not seen him on the way in, we quickly rush outside to make sure a horde isn't following him. After determining he's in fact just a lone scout, we'll quickly dispatch of him by force. As a bonus, we reach level 1 in electricity for deconstructing all of these computers. As the first light of day broke over the horizon, we decided to make a change. Our old coat just wouldn't cut it anymore. We rummaged through our meager possessions and found a padded coat, more protective and durable than anything we had worn before. It was a good choice, or so we thought. As we began to work and break down furniture, we soon realized that the heat was becoming oppressive. It didn't take long to understand our mistake in choosing to wear a heavier coat. We promptly shed the unnecessary layer to continue our journey without the added burden, and to maintain proper temperature control. Being too hot would drain our energy faster and increase our appetite. Surprisingly, inside the office, a pack of smokes waited for us, which we happily grabbed before continuing our deconstruction. We enter slow as we haven't actually been in here before. There was an eerie feeling lingering upon our shoulders as we scanned the overgrown office. At the back of the building, a window lay bare, looked out upon a large abandoned parking lot. The building across the way showed signs of mutations, a door smashed, eerie claw marks along the walls. As we analyzed it from a distance, a parade of mutations wandered out on patrol, almost on cue. We decided not to linger any longer. There was plenty of places to visit to master carpentry so there's no reason to work so close to their hordes and territory at this time. We decide to head back down to the small urban zone south of the train yard. Although we've been there before, we kind of rushed through and only really looted the food. We'll start out back with the sheds we didn't realize were accessible. garden gate locked tight. In the first one, a golden object of apocalyptic desire laid there like a beacon from the gods. A generator shined like a pillar of hope in this dark gray world. We waste no time in bringing it home. However, we still needed to learn how to actually connect it to the tower if we wanted to have power. We'd also need to be prepared in case the noise brings the wrath of the hordes down upon us. With renewed hope, we'll spend the rest of the day smashing down bits of the old world for experience. After dinner, and before sleep, we push through our two hours of rigorous body training. It'll leave us reeling in pain the next day, but if we're to survive this nightmare, we'll need to be stronger, faster, and better than we ever were before. 
we opened our eyes again, the lingering morning darkness clung to the ground. As the sun shone through the mist, it was obvious we wouldn't be heading out just yet. We spend the morning relaxing and reading up on advanced hunting tips. When we grow bored of reading, we organize our belongings and take stock of our food supply. All the food you can see is all the food we had. Hours passed, but still the fog remained. We read until well after noon, when the fog finally cleared up enough to see five feet in front of your face. We waste no more time and quickly rushed out to continue training our carpentry skill. During the process, we discovered a back room untouched by human hand. Inside it laid something so beautiful, so immeasurable by words alone, a generator guide. The key to having power was now at our fingertips. We had gas, we had a generator, and now we knew how to operate it. It would be a while more before we'd decide to activate the power, but at least we had a reason to gather power-operated utilities now. The bunk bed had outlived its service. We consumed its knowledge of wood and nail and replaced its existence with the beautiful couch we found that matched our chair. With home renovations out of the way, we move on to daily training to welcome in the moonlight. Sleep would soon follow as we fell into routine. We awakened with vigor. Something felt good about today. After a hearty breakfast of gravy and corn, we'll head out into the train yard with aims to clear out the smaller infestations in the storage houses. They had a lot of wooden crates stored in there, perfect for our carpentry training. smell their fear after we killed their leader. Look how he runs from us. Alas, no escape, no mercy. With that final kill marked these two buildings safe and secured, for now. We'll quickly grab the experience we came for and make our way forward.
Even though we had power in a propane grill, a charcoal grill offered an off-grid method of cooking, which we'd happily take advantage of. On our way home, we smash hood first into the abandoned ride in the middle of the street. After making sure we're unharmed, we take a moment of our time to clear the road of debris. For future safe passage. We had a lead foot and liked to go fast. And that marked twice today, we almost died from head-on collisions. After bringing home our new grill, we wind the night down with a couple hours of hard physical training. And then call it a night after finishing our read of advanced hunting. The morning sun brought much of the same for us today. We'd eat breakfast and then head back down to the small neighborhood. If we're going to reach level 6 carpentry, that cluster of houses would surely grant it to us. Like many mornings, the eerie mist lingered around the ground, obscuring reality. Haunting shadows danced along our peripherals, toying with our sense of security. We could hear the distant banging of mutant scouts pushing their way closer to us. How many more days would it be until the whole collection moved in? In the house we rescued Ducky Jr. from, a horde of goodies awaited us. Surely our good deeds were being rewarded. Beer, chips, and cigarettes. Not many, but enough for a man to enjoy himself a brew after a hard day's work. We rubbed our eyes as we stepped into the adjacent yard. David the Gnome, a local celebrity, awaited rescue from the apocalypse. With David in tow, our list of companions now grew larger. Amidst the dusty and forgotten items in the closet of a particular house, we stumbled upon a beautiful angelic instrument, the banjo. It seemed a shame to leave it behind, so we gratefully added it to our collection. We arrive home after sunset. Having lost track of time while working on deconstructing houses, we laid out the supplies we had gathered and placed the new instrument in a safe spot before settling in ourselves. We were right on the cusp of level 6 carpentry, which means it was time to concentrate on our homestead. Our current food and water supplies would not last forever, so it was necessary to create a renewable means of obtaining them. A small farm and a few water barrels would be sufficient to cover our needs, but we would have to tackle that task 
next time. Hello. The sun was shining bright in Louisville, casting a warm glow across the sparkling water. We spent the day fishing in the water trap, hoping to catch enough to fill our bellies and regain some lost weight. It was hard to feel down with the beauty of nature surrounding us. We collected a relative hoard of fish today. We laid out our prized possessions, and while doing so, decided we needed more room on each floor and destroyed the center column that rose up from the ground. We stood over our collection like a hungry goblin salivating at our first fresh meal of the year. For dinner, we'll be preparing the fish we caught in multiple ways. Our largest catch, the big perch, would be cooked whole. We also used the fillets from the smaller ones and grilled them with some potatoes and carrots. While the sound of simmering meat rolled out from under the grill's lid, we increased our knowledge about fish. The perch was an absolutely filling dinner, leaving our stomachs bursting to the brim. We'll save the delicious fish and vegetable roast for tomorrow and snack on the fillets in between. With all of this, our weight should stabilize again for a while. After dinner, we partake in our evening workout routine. We start with squats, and then do some push-ups. We hit the beer curls, and then do some sit-ups. And finally, some burpees. Every day, our muscles screamed at us, a necessary reminder that we were making progress. A new day dawned as dark clouds rolled overhead. We still felt the joy from our fresh meal washing over us, so undaunted by the gloom of the rain, we threw on our poncho and head out into it. We are focusing entirely on the homestead going forward. We build out our patio for safety, as well as build out the plateau to farm on. In the midst of our work, we suddenly accumulated enough EXP to reach level 6 carpentry. We put the plateau on hold and aptly switched gears. We'll build a staircase and claim a new piece of the sky for our own. Now that we had rooftop access, we were going to need a lot more wood than we currently had. We'll use up what we currently possess to make a small landing zone on top of the stairs, and then head to the Central Park for some deforestation. We end our productive day with our leftover fish roast and daily workout routine before laying our weary head to rest. In the morning, we take some time for self-care. We put on a new hoodie. Shave away the beard that's grown unruly. A morning cigarette eases the nerves as we head out into the day. We felt truly indestructible living the easy life here in the center of Louisville. Impatience causes us to smash our vehicle twice in a row while gathering all of the lumber. We almost totally, completely destroyed the engine. We would need to proceed with the utmost caution as to not hit anything else with this vehicle, or else it will cease to run, leaving us stranded and down to one running vehicle. We absolutely needed to take our time with every corner and... Just like that, we were walking again. We'll take the fully charged battery from the vehicle and grab our canisters of gas. We'll be heading up to the restaurant where another vehicle in semi-running condition was waiting for us. We 
fill her up with gas and then start her up. We'll be returning to our old vehicle to reclaim all of her items and the gas in her tank, and then proceed with what we were doing. It was a minor setback, but this little car was actually faster, which could only be a good thing, right? We built a water collector box atop the roof so that we could begin our plumbing system. We'll also fence off the edge for our own protection. The boxes don't have nearly as large a capacity as the barrels, so we'll build a second one to supplement the first one. We'll use the wall sinks from the bathroom next door to get us fresh water on demand. This homestead was going to be 100% self-sufficient, so we could worry about bigger problems, like the huge masses of mutations spotted around the fringes of the city. The sun broke out over the dystopian horizon, signaling to us that it was safe to move around freely again. The sunlight was a gift we didn't want to waste, so after morning preparations, we headed out quickly. Yesterday, we finished the foundation for our farming field. Now we just need to collect the dirt, four tiles at a time. Back and forth, we went all day long, dig the hole, collect the dirt. Drop the dirt. Then we switched to gravel and did the same process all over again. Not used to the brakes on the new vehicle, we smash it nose first into our own tower, almost crippling our only remaining vehicle. We leave the center row open so that we can walk through our plants without trampling over them and destroying them. With these final gravel pours, we had finished the flooring of our homestead. We tried to patch the hole in our fence next to the stairs, but without building a floor to the other side, this was impossible. We decided just to ignore it after a few attempts. The roof was going to be where we stored our power, our grills, and would become our new central workout spot. Who doesn't love relaxing on a roof and drinking a nice cold beer? Its completion left us with a feeling of pride and euphoria. Our own piece of civilized civilization was now ours inside the hell halls of Louisville. Power, running renewable water, and possibly sustainable food sources. We wind the night down with routine and then welcome the overbearing darkness. Every day brought with it layers of advanced progress. We blew through our wood supply, so today we'd be spending it deforesting the Central Park and transferring more lumber out to our Central Train Yard homestead. With the renewed lumber supply, we spend a day building out the barrier fence along the edge of the patio plateau. It looked nice and would hopefully stop us from accidentally running straight off the edge. We also left room for a walkway towards our neighboring building. We build out a crosswalk to an emergency rope ladder in case we ever lost access to our immediate rope entrances. We also create a spot for more water collection just for our crops. We definitely don't want to go to the roof every time we want to water our plants. Inside the dilapidated building, we built a security wall around our rope ladder, inside the most central room of the building, as well as barricaded the door and walls to hopefully keep any sneaky scouts from ruining our backup plans. It's been almost a month since we started training ourselves, and we could actually see some progress being made. With the homestead now in a state of completion and self-efficiency, we could really concentrate on building ourselves up. 
We didn't know if this would start to be a daily thing, but we went for a jog around the train yard. We spent the entire day running. We just ran until we couldn't anymore. It seemed well worth the efforts to include running into our daily training. Just from today, we gained an entire level. We would need to experiment with just how long we should run each day. We end our evening with a lovely fruit salad to boost our mood. We managed to level up our cooking skill in the process. As the morning sun rose above the horizon, we headed to the roof to welcome in the morning rays. We sat atop the tower surveying the world around us. We had come a long way since the beginning of the end of the world by building a home that was both strong and resilient. But even as we marveled at our own achievement, we knew that there was still much work to be done. The world was a dangerous and unforgiving place. We had to remain strong and vigilant if we were to survive. We turned our gaze up to the tower and to our future with all of its uncertainties and challenges. We knew that we could not predict what lay ahead, but now that shelter, food, and water were all accounted for, we could keenly focus on improving our physical form and spreading our influence throughout Louisville. Our future goals subsisted entirely of self-improvement, but that would have to wait until next time. Hello. In the heart of Louisville lived a busy man, our protagonist, Miles Barrow. We returned and missed an afternoon adventure as we explored the last bits of the train yard. On the far northwest side lay two unexplored sheds waiting to be reclaimed. A small infestation of mutants occupied the space temporarily. With the imminent threat removed, we searched for any goodies we could find. Surprisingly, this small storage building contained an absolute deluge of ammo, a really beautiful weapon, as well as the almighty crowbar and military flashlight combo. The FAL 50 cal in the gun container unfortunately had no magazine, but that didn't mean we were about to abandon such a gorgeous invention. At home, we'll lay out the rifle as a trophy for now, as well as take visual stock of just how much ammo was in that shed. A total of 16 boxes of 50 BMG, and 6 boxes of 45 ACP. With our growing hoard of supplies, we needed more storage, so we grabbed a few metal shelves from the nearby buildings for our inner storage floors. To help sustain our preserved food supply, we supplement our meals with fresh fish any chance we get. The double fish traps will help get bait for our fishing poles, or in a worst case scenario, provide a healthy protein snack. With some good luck on our side, we'll be feasting on a decent sized pike tonight. We'll use some of the fillets to make a fish roast for some easy cooking XP, then grill it all up. Just like last time, we'll save the roast for later and enjoy a grilled whole medium pike for dinner tonight. After dinner, we'll clean up a bit and then read ourselves to sleep. When our eyes flutter awake again inside the book, no sunlight could be found. We'll waste the early hours of the morning reading. And then, we'll head out just as the sun's about to break over the horizon. We had a new destination we wanted to reach. Just a couple blocks away was LSU, a rather sizable college campus. As all good colleges do, they spent egregious amounts of money on their sports team and equipment. Now, at the precipice of ruin, we'll take advantage of that fact. We want to gain access to the main gymnasium, and hopefully inside we'll find one of the greatest conveniences that can be offered to a man trying to improve himself. A dumbbell. Unfortunately, the creatures hadn't fully settled in for their morning naps. As we drive by, they seek out the sound of our engine. We 
can't leave so many wanderers unattended just outside our base's perimeter, so we'll greet them with the sound of flesh and metal clapping. The amount of mutants on the streets was growing. We'll need to start thinning the horde of beasts if we want to make progress into their territory. The sunlight on our shoulders gave us some reprieve from their terror, but the sheer number that exists out here was a little overwhelming. One of the zombies brought us a beautiful axe, which we'll happily swap out for our almost broken machete. We had plenty of duct tape, so we'll be able to repair the machete later when time wasn't so pressing. Our goal was the school, but we couldn't stop ourselves from checking out the local parking lot that we came across. Vehicles were just so disproportionately valuable to us. Inside the metal graveyard, we found not one, but three, working vehicles with keys just waiting to be joy-ridden by us. Each one carried problems of their own, but options were limited. We decided to utilize this area as a staging zone and start clearing our way forward to the school at the end of the street. Fences along both sides of the street made us feel secure about pushing forward. Less direction for possible sprinters to sneak up on us from. take any chance we get to catch our breath, to make sure we won't be caught in a situation we can't escape from. Son of a... Neo the Crawler avoids our attacks easily and lands a devastating bite on our dominant hand. Upon realizing we couldn't fight properly anymore, we attempted to make like a tree and get the fuck out of there. A sneaky sprinter interrupted our wound ten and sent us spiraling into chaos. We still weren't fast enough to outrun them outright. This information cost us another bite on our main hand, as well as a nasty laceration across the waist. 
We returned home to catch our breath and calm our nerves. We'd need to buy some time while we healed up our wounds before making another attempt to gain access to the campus gym. We headed back out to the water trap to clean off the carnage of the afternoon. Our stomachs reminded us of our shrinking food supply, so we'll gather another fish dinner before heading in for the night. The battle left our tank top worse for wear, so after treating our injuries, we'll scavenge through our goods to find a new one. For dinner, we cook up the sizable fish we caught whole, and then settle into the night with evening routine. Today, we enjoyed the luxury of sleeping in past noon. A violent blazing sun welcomed our pupils to the world. Unfortunately, mutant scouts also greeted us first thing today, and required us to fight in less than optimal condition. With the afternoon problem solved, we head out on a gathering quest. The fishing hole was the perfect place to waste away a day for recovery. We spend the afternoon surrounded by the serene scene of the overgrown golf course, and drain the water trap of whatever we could catch. We didn't catch anything too big, but we did catch a lot of smaller fish. The fishing hole was beginning to become exhausted, so we'd need to gather food in other ways for a while, or travel further into the park to find the center lake. After dinner, we take some time to clean and treat our wounds, which we probably should have done outside as to avoid getting blood on the floor. The elegant tapping of rain upon our roof signaled it was time to change gears. Although it was late, we donned our poncho and headed out into the dirt. This was the first rainfall since we built the water collectors in the farming field, so we took advantage of it to give the crops a good head start in life. Then we'll rest our weary heads till the morning. We woke up just before the sun, our muscles and wounds aching heavily still from the days prior. With the fishing hold low on supply, we'd need to spend today restoring our preserved food stash. We'll head out to the southern urban zone and continue siphoning out supplies from the once bustling neighborhood. We've only seen minor mutant activity in this vicinity, so we shouldn't have to worry about being overwhelmed. Besides just food, we also found a full propane tank, which we'll gladly take ownership of. We also found a bottle of bourbon, three boxes of 38 Special, which means we can finally use the Ruger we found a while ago, if we so desired. The propane tank only provides 20 hours of cooking, but it'll save us a lot of work gathering firewood or charcoal. We'll spend the next 24 hours reading constantly in order to get through the collection of knowledge that we've acclimated. After we've reconditioned our minds, we'll finally rest and treat ourselves so we can be in top fighting condition for when we make another attempt at breaching through the horde to reach the college gymnasium.
Non-stop, all morning long, we fought against waves of these mutations. So many corpses littered the streets around us that it started to make us feel queasy. We'll take this opportunity to rest in their car and get away from it all. After turning on the AC in the car to cool us down, we devoured the packed lunch we brought, smoke a cigarette to help calm any building anxiousness. After a very enjoyable lunch break, we jump straight back into the action. We got so close to our destination when Destiny decided it had different plans for us. One bad engagement left us reeling in pain as new bite marks adhered to our left forearm. We carefully drove ourselves out of this mess as we tried to bandage our injury. We decided to call it off for today. To return home and lick our wounds. After battling through hordes of enemies, we were starting to get exhausted. And this was our only reward. Our poor vehicle was a little closer to dead after our rushed escape from the oncoming mutations. After getting inside out of the rain, we found ourselves covered head to toe in the aftermath of the battle, and even more grateful to be immune to whatever caused all of this. Our destination remained unchanged despite all of the narrow setbacks we faced. Our goal of dumbbells would drive us to go to the greatest of lengths, but that'll have to wait until next time. Hello. We returned to our hero's tower home, battered and bruised, our arms crying out in pain from the injuries we received from our college expedition. We'd need to avoid any further fighting until we fully recovered. In the meantime, we'll focus on improving ourselves and our situation. While we cook our morning breakfast of fried vegetable rice, we also sterilize some bandages and treat our wounds properly. Although we were seemingly immune to the contagion, we weren't immune to all infections and didn't want these injuries to fester. In the afternoon, we opt for some light work to keep ourselves busy. We'll head over to the parking lot that contained the running vehicles and see if we can't find a faster way there. According to the map, it was the parking lot of the train station, just north of the tower. A small through road had a few scouts blocking the path. We were far too weak at the moment to deal with this manually, so we'll list the aid of our giant metal companion. After scouting out the area, we figure the fastest way to recover the vehicles, and also create a shortcut to LSU, is the American way. We'll manifest our destiny right through the center of the track's fences, thereby directly connecting us to our goal. allotted all of our time to physical torment and exercise, as well as mental exercises and reading. Our past excursion showed we weren't quite ready to deal with the hordes head on, so we'd need to push ourselves to the limits. After completing the menial task of vehicle recovery, we direct our focus on self-improvement. We spend our daylight hours running till the sun was ready to set, then we spend our nighttime hours straining our muscles with extended daily routine. 
Heavy rains came to bless our fields and barrels. During the heavy falls, we take the opportunity to wash away the remnants of battle from ourselves and our clothes. Since we were just doing general training, we break out the old reliable broken glass and promptly throw it on the ground under our bare feet. This causes us to step on said broken glass, lodging it deep into our soles, which allows us to constantly remove the broken glass from our feet, giving us as much medical experience as we desire, with very little fear of death. Concerned about our dwindling preserved food supply, we venture back out to our fishing hole. While the fish traps were well stocked, the water trap hadn't yet recovered. We needed to take a chance and explore further into the park to check out the central pond for more resources. We find a seemingly abandoned ice cream shop on the way to the center of the park. No one seems to be here, so we take this chance to snoop around. In the end, we decided the woods were far too dangerous. The number of feral mutations was concerning above all else. The last thing we wanted was to make a mistake and crash our car, stranding ourselves in the woods with these things. With each sprint, we turn our calories into EXP, and with that, we push our sprinting level to level 3. In the middle of June, our first cabbage plant bears seeds for our future crops, as well as two levels of farming. The abandoned living spaces provides us with copious amounts of EXP, helping to push our carpentry to level 7. With that, we'd be able to expand our water network and greatly increase our farming capabilities. On the weeks when it doesn't rain, we were going to require an absurd amount of water to keep our farm running properly. During our morning jog, we're empowered to a new era. Our strength increased to level 6, finally granting us a new trait. Beyond just being a regular old smoker, we were now a stout old man as well. Our crops grew large and beautiful for us. The small amount of fresh vegetables from our garden really helped extend our food supplies. We supplemented every meal with our cabbages and carrots while they lasted. Persistence is important when trying to make progress. After weeks and weeks of pushing our bodies to the extreme limits, we finally accomplished the feat we set out for. We gained a new trait when we gained level 6 fitness. Now we were a fit and stout old man, with a lust for nicotine. Every day our progress granted boons of serotonin. At the end of June we were sprinting faster and longer than ever before. Our sprinting ability grew to level 4, which should help a lot when it comes to keeping pace with the sprinting mutations. Overall, our progress since the beginning has been very good. With level 6 fitness and strength and level 4 sprinting, we felt it was time to once again make an attempt to break into LSU and to claim a pair of dumbbells for our own. We drink a beer to celebrate our hard work and let the liquid courage flow through our veins. When the sun would rise again, it would be time to fight.
We awaken before first light breaks, the anticipation already making our blood pump faster. We trim up our burly beard and eat a small but healthy breakfast, to be prepared as much as possible before heading out into the northern war zone. An ominous fog clings to the ground, causing us to question if we should proceed. Even the car hesitates when passing through our new passageway, trying to warn of the dangers that lurk ahead. But we refuse to be deterred. We push on into the mutation's territory, ready to carve our axe into their lands. Nasty mutation telekinetically bites on our skull through our closed door and window. We were originally planning to simply reposition, but with the new injury, we calculated it would be safer simply to run home. The awakened horde being called in by the Shrieker meant numbers were about to get very unstable. With the injuries, we were unsure if we could safely dispatch them all. For now, we'll head home to nurse our wound, and then maybe try again later. LSU was proving to be a very difficult building to raid. We may try to up our firepower before we try again. What was certain is that we thoroughly underestimated just how many mutations were going to be around this area. We were pushing over 500 kills and still haven't even set foot inside of the building. We didn't want to resort to fire, as we feared the fire spreading and burning down all possible loots. Also, with the zombies' terrible daytime perception, it was difficult to round up large hordes. For now, we take care of our current injuries and recluse ourselves in our tower home. We had a few immediate issues we had to remedy, like food. But that would have to wait until next time. Hello. We stand at the zenith of our tower, contemplating the choices that have brought us to this destiny so far. A flurry of stats and skills leveled across the board, the arrows of boosted learning dancing in our minds as we peter back and forth about what our goal should be. LSU had been a bust, so much violence with minuscule progress to show for it. Our food coffers grow bare while we continue our pursuit down the path of violence. We refocus our energy into filling our stomachs. We'll start our adventure inside the quiet zone and see what conveniences await us. The old overgrown roads clinging to their long forgotten memories as the precarious rumble of the present rolls overhead. Inside these ticky tacky houses, the songs of the lost could still be found and with them the succulent cans of food awaited patiently for our arrival. 
There was something unsettling about breaking into the memories of the fallen. A place where time seemingly stood still, quietly crying out for the life that once flourished here. Our trespass forcefully restarting the paces of time, which might not otherwise have ever moved again. The dead need not what the living crave, so we progress freely forward and let not the guilt of has-beens hold us down. sounds of the neighbors partying draws our attention as we make it to the last mold on the row. The Tangerine Horizon warns us of the coming dangers. We decide to head out while we still had plenty of sun left. We leave notes on the map reminding us that the scouts were starting to push up into the quiet zone from the Central Park. Just how many of them had begun nesting in the underbelly of the forest. We found a steady stock of canned goods and a new ducky to join the family. Overall, it was a pretty good day for us. We'll celebrate our surplus with a feast. We'll make a nice roast of stir-fry of fresh cabbages, canned meat, and fresh spices. A luxury that up until now was impossible to enjoy in our cuisine. The culmination of experience will reward us with a new level of cooking, just in time to grant us a better final product to help recover our lost weight. So far, we were managing our weight between 80 and 84 kilograms, which is just under the amount of weight to be overweight. Welcome a new day while tendrils of darkness still clung tightly all around. It had been almost a week since we used up the rest of our farming water, and now even our personal supply was drying up. We had maybe another week at most until our collectors ran completely dry. While we wait for water to come from the sky, we decide to do a bit of looting in another close by location. A small gas station north of the Central Park. One of the only areas we haven't seen scouts pushing into yet from the contagion zones. Inside the gas station, an annotated map sat precariously perched on the book stands. It read, Whoever finds this, I was Natalie Sigmundson, lecturer in art history at LSU. I'm already dead. But I have a final request. This is only the end of the world if we allow it to be. We must secure the treasures in the art gallery or we will be truly lost. My friend managed to gather a cache of weapons in a car near the gallery. Use them to clear it out. Let no one say that humanity is lost forever. Natalie's words lingered on our minds long after we pocketed her final message. We decide to grab the freezer for when we turn the power on. These ice chests were great for storing lots of food over the winter time when we needed to preserve our harvest from the fall. In the back of the little cafe, we find the kind of loots that survivors can only dream of. 
an entire bowl of cake batter waiting to be turned into the delicious delicacy back at home. Our minds seem to be playing tricks on us the longer we spend alone. We swear we see fresh sweets calling our names at the back of the shop. But when we investigate them a little closer, they too have grown rotten with age. Disappointment is the first word to come to mind. It's revenge. We decide to take the pie sign for home. Our luck with car keys is absolutely absurd. I've lost track of the number of running vehicles now available to us. But it was a lot. As we head home with a truck full of food, we notice something very appealing. Four large garages in a row, tempting us with their metallic mouths trying to conceal their paltry gifts. It's still early in the day, so of course we stop to investigate them. Do our eyes deceive us? Will glory truly lay hidden waiting in such a place? A prize so amazing yet condescending at the same time. The very obstacle of our desire lay here, unguarded and alone. Not only a dumbbell, but a barbell to match. Our hunger for gains hath been satiated by our hidden jewels. The metal weights clutch close to our chest. We quickly barrel for our truck and rush home, like a kid waking up on Christmas. With our list of goals shrinking and a bright sun waving good morning, we decide now is the perfect time to utilize that cake batter in celebration. We decide to ultimately mix the batter with some fresh canned peaches and bake a glorious peach cake of perfection as a reward for valiantly rescuing those sweet sticks of hard metal. After our cake breakfast, we'll finish what we started yesterday and loot the quiet neighborhood by the bank. If nothing else, we would have a really nice supply of food to keep our calorie intake high enough to continue working out and push ourselves to a maxed out strength.
A duck army was growing. Every rescue duck took up arms inside the tower. Each had his own role in our society. Some were expert foragers scouring the fields for any scraps of food they could find. Others acted as scouts keeping watch over the surrounding areas and alerting us to any potential threats. And of course, there were soldiers armed with beaks and wings, ready to defend our tower at a moment's notice. Our duck army grew in size and strength. We remained steadfast in our determination to protect our flock and our way of life. With each passing day, we grew more confident in our ability to defend ourselves and our feathered comrades. And as the sun set each evening, we would gather together inside the tower, exhausted but content in the knowledge that we had each other and our unwavering spirit of determination. While we spent our hours reading, we would often get lost in inner monologue. We'd lose track of time and weather, only snapping out of our days when the book was finished. Sometimes even tremendous storms could sneak over us while we were lost in thought. It was a welcome surprise, bringing with it the cleaning splash of fresh water and breeding new opportunities for our farming ventures. When the weather quieted down, we decided to do some reconnaissance. We had a request from a dead lady and a report of weapons, enough to storm one of the most populated places in Louisville. To say they caught our attention is an understatement. What harm could one quick recon trip cause? starting to think this was a mistake. This was definitely a mistake. Panic setting in. Need to get out of here now. Hello. When last we met, our overconfidence drove us into a precarious predicament. We thought we could casually drive ourselves to the center of the horde and come out without any issues. Our vehicle stands here now on three tires, but just barely. Before we get too far though, let's rewind the clocks a bit and take a look at how we managed to get back home alive and unscathed. Quick thinking pulled us out of the clutches of the mob. Followed by a swift U-turn, we managed to squeeze our way out of their range. We blow our tire on some corpses on the way home. 
but at least it didn't happen just a little bit sooner. The rest of the ride is much less eventful, but at a slower pace. When we return to our shaken hero in the present day, we find him enjoying his floating garden sanctuary. The strawberry bushes that run along the garden path were finally ready and bearing seeds. The beautiful and delicious red berries would serve us wonderfully over the coming reclusive days. We also leveled up our farming skill. Glorious. Hello. After a comment request from a previous video, I increased the resolution of the recording and the resolution of the game in hopes to give out a higher resolution product. Hopefully, going forward, things will be a little bit better on that front. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps a lot with pushing my channel out to more people. Thanks for watching. During a stormy day at home, we decided to extend the farm more. Our gluttonous side poured through as we dug these furrows, thinking about all the varieties of food we'd be able to grow and eat going forward. When winter comes, having a larger farm harvest going into the colder seasons will really pay off as easier food supplies get cut off. To be honest, we were scared. We were locking ourselves away at home, contemplating all of the ways we could move forward. We can get bigger, stronger, smarter and faster, sure. But ultimately, we needed a better way to eliminate the mutations. We needed guns that packed more power than the handguns we possessed. Otherwise, we'd never make any progress with escaping this hell-forsaken landscape we were locked into. Hell, even if we escaped, where would we go? While our reclusive days continued, we decided to scrap the survivor van for knowledge. As we ripped her apart down to her frame, we increased our mechanics to level 2. We'll follow this up by reading the next tier of mechanics book. Who doesn't love pancakes? With fresh strawberries, peaches, maple syrup, and a sprinkle of cocoa powder for breakfast, we would enjoy these beautiful carb-packed snacks over the next few days or so, fueling our never-ending fitness drive. In Project Zomboid, making pancakes with toppings is a seriously tedious task. The food is great, but it's so, so many clicks. We AFK sprint in place for hours on end, testing the viability of sprint training inside. It was the ultimate waste of time as we end up only gaining like two or three hundred experience throughout the time, which can be gained much faster when time warp sprinting outdoors. The AI conflicts from the mods make for some interesting zombie behavior. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is still yet to be decided. On one of our rest days, we waste some time by turning the power on. In the two months we've been surviving out here, it'll be the first time we've heard the voice of others. We'll turn on the television and watch a couple of old VHS tapes that we found lying around. It almost calms our restless hearts. After the two videos, the sound of the generator started to bug us, so we shut down the power again to resume our peace and quiet. Beautiful. We lay in bed peacefully listening to the rain tink atop the rooftop of our tower sanctuary. It was now almost the end of July, and we were still being completely contained to the center quiet zone. Something had to change. We wash ourselves of the despair that's lingered over us since our overconfidence threw us into the center of a vile horde. It was time to enact a plan to make use of the resources we had available to us to better our situation and further our cause. The 
sun shone bright over the old homestead. We gained a nice boon since getting better at farming. We could check on our crops from a distance, without even leaving the safety of our balcony. We knew exactly how our crops were growing and what they needed to survive, water-wise. Our plan was simple. We scoured our memory of the surrounding neighborhoods and found that the most likely place to find guns, within a reasonable distance, would be an old pawn shop southeast of the Central Park. Only problem was getting there. We needed to make our way to a central small urban four-way and then head down to the old cul-de-sac until we can peel off into the pawn shop's parking lot. On paper, this was a simple enough plan. After clearing out a spot to fight from, we decided it's time to level our aiming. We were going to get to this pawn shop no matter what, even if it took all of our stocked up pistol ammo. Thankfully, their bad daytime senses meant we wouldn't be drawing hordes from neighboring neighborhoods. We run out of 9mm bullets and decide to call it for the day. We had a foothold in our plan mostly secured, and now it's time to rejuvenate and re-gear ourselves. We grab our Colt 21 which uses 45 ACP, which we happen to have over 8 boxes of ammo for, and extra magazines. We'll attach the red dot sight and weapon light to make it a bit more tactical. A new day beckoned us. We woke up promptly at 6.30 a.m., invigorated and inspired. We donned a perfectly conditioned leather jacket for armor from the hordes, with Lucille and Tempest at our side. We were 100% ready to accomplish this delve into the unknown. On our way back, we decided that Gnome David needed a friend. On our journey into the unknown, we find a roaming pair of ex-police officers, still wielding their peacemaker tools. We humbly suggest they acquiesce to our request to hand over those beautiful 12-gauge shotguns for the purpose of safe disposal. Of course. We've arrived a little past lunchtime. The pawn shop was right there in front of us, standing tall alone in its place. But first, we'd need to secure the area before we could enjoy our rewards. Above the chaos nested into the attic of the pawn shop, 
a small alcove of peace. We find a stash of canned foods hidden away, so we help ourselves to a late lunch, early dinner, before finishing what we came here to do. Inside the pawn shop was no guns, but what it lacked in guns it made up for in ammo and other niceties. Entire shelves lined to the brim with boxes of ammo, and we took every single one of them. We'd found shotguns earlier, so the 12 gauge ammo was generously welcomed. We could also possibly break down the bullets and craft some of our own, assuming we knew the recipe already. With a successful loot mission completed, we packed up the car and sped home victorious. Ammo, armor, clothing, weapons, and more. The pawn shop and the path to it were very generous in the provided supplies. It felt good to be successful. The rewards were tremendous. The dopamine coursed through our overworked bodies. And to top it off, we found a new trendy bag that could fit more of our supplies easier. There was so much open to us now. With that, we'd have to wait until next time. Life can change in an instance. Sometimes one click is all it takes. In those moments, we're reminded of the fragility of existence. But sometimes, in that moment of crisis, something extraordinary happens. You're saved by a force beyond your comprehension. And in that moment, you're struck with a sense of gratitude a newfound appreciation for the simple things in life. Life can be unpredictable. After narrowly escaping death, we make the most of the current moment. We decide to start our adventure with a fashion show, trying on outfits we'd collected from our previous escapade. It may seem like a frivolous activity, but it was a reminder to savor life's simple pleasures and to never take anything for granted. As the rain began to fall the next day, we saw an opportunity to give our new crops a head start in life. Stormy weather like this was our preferred time to plant, as the rain would do much of the work for us. We took advantage of the downpour and got to work, grateful for the gift of rain. With no plans to leave the homestead for a couple of days, we decided to make the most of our time and squeeze in an extended workout after our morning planting. Despite the stormy weather in the afternoon, we ventured out to survey the nearby park, searching for the ideal location to set up a hunting plateau. Foraging in such harsh conditions was difficult, but the prospect of securing a steady source of fresh meat was too important to ignore. Our plan was to convert our homegrown vegetables into nourishing meals made with rabbits and birds we would hunt ourselves. With the goal of achieving self-sufficiency in mind, we scoured the park for the perfect spot, keeping an eye out for signs of wildlife, assessing the terrain. We bulldozed our way through the local trees with a vigor. We needed a lot of planks for our construction project. Traps were set and ready to go. Fortunately, a fresh crop of cabbage awaited us. Its leafy greens were crisp and tantalizing, just what we needed to attract the game we sought. With abundance of fresh produce from our garden and the potential for meat from our hunting plateau, we decided to permanently start up the generator. We moved it to our balcony, helping to keep the noise away from us at the top of the tower. As we embarked on our latest project, the hunting plateau, we couldn't help but get carried away with our construction fervor. The practicality of a bridge spanning the nearby road became all too clear to us, and what better way to connect it to our homestead than with a direct link? So we set to work, chopping down trees and churning out planks like a well-oiled machine, 
driven by our carpentry dreams. Only one night has passed, and already our traps have caught a few critters. We'll leave them in there for now as to not overburden us during our day of work. After several days of running the generator, we inspected and find it in excellent condition, with plenty of fuel left. Encouraged by this success, we venture out into the nearby neighborhoods to scavenge for wall lights. That way we can use them to illuminate our homestead and improve nighttime visibility on every floor. As we venture out to search for wall lights in the neighborhood, we stumble upon some disturbing noises coming from within one of our warehouses. It appears that a group of mutated scouts has found their way back into the building we previously cleared. As the rain falls, we take a well-deserved break from building the Great Bridge and turn our attention to the crops. The cabbages require our care, so we use the soothing rains to replant them, and with the tomatoes perfectly ripe, we harvest them with care and plant anew. During the construction process, we've lost a considerable amount of weight. However, we can't let that hold us back. For now, we'll make the last of our pancakes and add the issue of our weight to the list of things to address later. During one of the stormy days of chopping trees for the Great Bridge, the fog rolled in heavier and heavier, seemingly without end. Then, without any warning, it was just gone. The sudden vanishment was almost creepier than the fog itself, and startled us near to death. With our fresh ingredients and some canned potatoes, we create a delectable rabbit vegetable stew. It truly hits the spot. It's a satisfying meal that celebrates our hard work and triumphs. It wasn't quite enough calories to sustain our current weight, so we'll wash it down with an orange soda, a bag of evaporated milk, and a can of chili. As we poured our sweat and effort into the construction of the Great Bridge, hours turned into days, and our hair grew wild and unkept. It was time for a trim. We quickly shaved our heads to maintain our signature style. With the two-lane path completed, we considered extending the project by building fences for aesthetics. However, the amount of additional planks needed, about seven or eight hundred more, made us reconsider. Instead, we shifted our focus to finishing our trap rows and use some of the remaining planks to construct some more water collecting barrels for our farm. To keep our weight above 80 kilograms, we planned a hearty meal of roasted rabbit with tomato, potato, and a cabbage, with leftovers to use in a flavorful stir-fry. 
With all the survival work we had to do, maintaining a positive calorie count was a constant effort. After a satisfying dinner, we were excited to watch a new cooking VHS tape we found at the pawn shop. However, we soon realized that the TV and microwave on the top floor were not receiving power. Rather than troubleshooting the issue, we decided to relocate the TV downstairs and plug it in there. We'll deal with the microwave later. As our homestead grew stronger and more self-reliant with each passing day, we decided we needed to take the next steps to secure our future. After a week or so of hard labor constructing the Great Bridge, we devised a plan to raid the nearby police station for the much needed supplies, with our sights set on acquiring 12 gauge ammo primarily. We geared up with our best equipment and weapons. With the rifle sling we found at the pawn shop, we'd be able to quickly access our shotgun in an emergency situation. It allowed for multiple ways to hold an extra weapon. We decided we liked the look of the backpack sling the most. With all this thick gear, we were slightly concerned about our body's core temperatures. At least we could still smoke with the mask on. As we look out at the horizon from the safety of our homestead, we can't help but feel a sense of anticipation for what's to come. We spend countless hours preparing for whatever challenges may arise. Our weapons are sharp, our supplies are plentiful and our skills are home. The raid on the police station is just the beginning of what lies ahead, and we're more than prepared to face it head on. But that, we'll have to wait until next time. In the midst of the action, we returned to our hero racing through the Louisville streets. We were as prepared as any man could be. Now was the time for action. No matter how many we put down, there always seem to be more. In the heat of the moment, we spot a civilian in need of immediate rescue and evacuation. We couldn't leave her out here alone. A successful raid on the police station leaves us with a mountain of death-bringing treasure. Multiple incredible automatic weapons with mags and ammo to match. And all the weapon accessories we could ever need. To be specific, we looted a Daewoo K2, two H&Ks, an M40, an AK-5C, 
as well as a dozen boxes of 12 gauge, 28 boxes of 556, 17 boxes of 9mm, and a whopping 46 boxes of 50 DMG. With these magnificent machines of the Reaper, we were pretty confident in any task we would take on. The only thing left to do was to decide what we wanted to do. Our base provided a self-sufficient sanctuary. We had ample food and water to last us for the foreseeable future. We had even rescued the lovely Maria, provided her with a new safe home and fresh clothes. With a nearly unlimited supply of gasoline from the nearby gas stations and train yard storages, what else was there to accomplish? We wash the grit and sweat of combat away upstairs, and then prepare a feast for two that night. It's hard to count the days since the last time we didn't eat alone. An engorging roast for myself and a sizzling stir-fry for the companion. It had been a long trial of a day. It was almost 2 a.m. by the time we finally relaxed in bed and started to unwind for the night. When the sun finally broke across our kingdom, we turned back to our normal routine. We'd wake up, check the crops and traps, retrieve dinner and stash it away. And after that, we'd spend the afternoon training. We'd do this for the next couple days while we waited for the perfect day to set out on another quest. First, we leveled up our reloading skill. trapping skill would follow soon after. The rest of the day we devote to our mechanics work and ripped apart every car in the abandoned parking lot north of the park. Eventually leveling our mechanic skill as well. When we awoke to the sound of rainfall playfully dancing across the landscape, we knew today was not going to be the day. We relented ourselves to routine and maintenance once again. In our eager state of waiting, we turn to the radio and tune into the emergency broadcast station. Hopefully it gives us good news about what tomorrow might bring. And it delivers. The automatic voice that tumbled repeatedly every hour brought us the news we hoped for. A clear day for vigorous activities. The afternoon would be given to light work in preparation for tomorrow. We set aside our evening for socializing with our newfound friend and mentally preparing for what lay ahead. We still had unfinished business with the art gallery. Our mission was to reclaim humanity's treasures from the Horde, and it was nearly time to fulfill Natalie's final request. In order to create a specific ambiance, we meticulously replaced the bulb in our room with a deep crimson one. The warm glow cast an eerie and intense aura which was fitting for the mission that lay ahead. After preparing another dinner for two, we'll quickly retire to bed. With the sunrise, will come the start of our journey to carve a path to the art gallery. A red hue swarms the air around us as our eyes flicker awake before the rise of the sun. We lay in bed, conserving our strength and enjoying a few smokes till light breaks. When the beams of light bend through our window frames, we don our battle attire and prepare for the monumental task ahead of us.
At the start of the day, our overconfidence leads us to miss an important attack on a sprinter, resulting in a nasty scratch across our left hand. We retreat to tend to our wounds and regroup. It's time to bring out the big guns and face the obstacles ahead with a bit more of a bang. We managed to tear through all of our 5.56 ammo except for three mags worth before the sun set that night. We paused from the onslaught for a brief moment in the orange hue of the evening sun to inhale some nicotine to calm our nerves. We hadn't quite made it to our destination yet. We'll do some cleanup with our pistol before heading home and before the sun fully sets and awakens the horde's true fury. Red atop white horse, harbinger of the end times, bringer of chaos. In his wake lies death, destruction and peace combined. The new dawn shall rise. Today alone, our kill count doubled on our blitzkrieg into the city. Between the pawn shop, the police station, and the art museum, We've witnessed more bloodshed than we ever thought possible in one man's life. Our extermination today cleared about half of the main path of its infected hosts, but the second half nearly cost us our lives previously. With great determination, we have become the grim reapers to these mutants, and every day we survive, we go stronger and more ruthless. We are the ones left to clean up the mess of those who came before us for the sake of our survival. And that of the possible future generations, we must prevail. But that, we'll have to wait until next time. Behold, the jewel of our world. Sanctuary. A floating crystal palace of peace above the carnage that waited all around. Deep inside our den, we settled in for the long haul. We're not concerned with the consequences of our action. Only with the rewards they'll bring. Every day we lifted weights, every day we sprinted the bridge, every day we tended the crops and the traps, and every day we continued to prosper, pushing the sustainability of our homestead out of question. In the process of progress, we're constantly expanding our skill sets. On this day, we'll harvest a beautiful plot of ripe potatoes, and then we'll actively train our tailoring skill to level 2, and reinforce all of our clothing with leather strips in the process for a bit of extra defense. Now that power was on at the tower, we've decided for a more permanent cooking solution. After clearing out some unwanted pests, we'll claim an electric air fryer for the homestead. Food prep and cooking just became a whole lot easier without the need for propane or ignition materials. Freezer space was limited at the tower. To maximize the use of our space, we drive around town to different locations on a hunt for popsicle freezers. They'd allow us to maintain way more food over the winter than a bunch of regular fridges.
We also use our trip around the local area to grab some more light fixtures from the old golf club to brighten everything up a little more around the homestead. Two weeks pass quickly in this fashion. We neither deviate nor hesitate in following our planned path. The pain and suffering from the extreme workout routine and lifestyle has pushed many of our skills to incredible new heights. As it stood, we currently have level 7 fitness, level 7 strength, 5 sprinting, 1 light-footed, 2 nimble, 1 sneaking, 3 axe, 2 long blade, 2 maintenance, 8 carpentry, 6 cooking, 6 farming, 3 first aid, 2 electric, 4 mechanics, 2 tailoring, level 5 aiming and reloading. Altogether, a very fine set of skills. Our freezers are absolutely overflowing with fresh produce and game. Stacks of cabbages, potatoes, tomatoes, radishes, broccoli, carrots, and strawberries, as well as dozens of rather sizable delicious rabbits. To say we were living well in the heart of disaster would be an understatement. We even jarred a few different vegetables. It was a great way to preserve extra servings of food for the long haul without the use of temperature. We assigned a few of our duck friends to different jobs around the tower. On the food preservation floor, we have Private Fried Duck and Private Quackpot in charge of the mess hall. On the logistics floor, we have Major Duct Tape and Major Duct Tainer, keeping everything stocked and organized. On our rooftop recreation center, we have Sergeant Waddles in charge of our workout routine, and Private Peeper is always watchful, keeping an eye out for incoming danger. If Private Peeper is alerts, we have Sergeant Quackshot with a scoped M40 to quickly enact offensive actions, 308 sized as necessary. It became increasingly difficult to sleep at night due to the combination of pain from intense workouts and noise from the others. We turned to medications to alleviate the pain that haunted us daily. A few odd pills allowed us to skip forward a couple of hours. Whether we felt rejuvenated or not was a different story entirely. When we opened our eyes again, the flash of red reminded us of the treacherous crawl we signed up for when we accepted Natalie's final request. The pain had finally ended after our days of rest and it was time to continue our onslaught where we left off. chaos, we found a man wearing a ghillie suit. It interested us enough to leave the comfort of our van, if only for a short period. Inside the seven-story deeply infested nest in the heart of the city, needed to go. We let loose a burning inferno that will soon consume the heart of Louisville, and all of these creatures with it. That was a problem for the future. For now, we simply enjoyed as we watched that glorious fire slowly spread up the building.
couldn't believe our eyes. Sometimes dreams do come true. One of the beasts had a katana sticking through them. Old Lucia was getting replaced real quick. We get distracted with the fight. As soon as the sun set below the horizon, we looked at our clocks and our hearts dropped. We quickly raced home before the Horde's deluge become an inescapable rush of fury. We spend a glorious moment admiring our new weapon. Before laying Lucille to rest, she had done a mighty fine job up till now. We'll also prepare a glorious roast that we'll save for tomorrow. We'll be leaving early to dive deeper into the chaos. Sleep still eluded us, even when the pain was gone. We laid there in bed listening to the conversations whispered around the room, a quiet choir that might lull us back to sleep. But no. When the sun finally arrived, we grabbed our food and rushed out the door to begin anew. As the soft orange hues began to settle atop the surrounding concrete, we finally laid eyes on the goal. 
The bastion of expression amidst the end of the world lay open wide in front of us. All we need is to reach out and grasp it with our own two hands. To not get caught in a bad situation again, we head home a bit early while the sun is still bright. We'll need to refuel and make repairs to the van before the sun sets tonight, so we can prepare to leave early again tomorrow. We'll place the front glass and hood, as well as the tires and brakes. We replaced the lights with slightly better ones, and replaced the back doors and rear glass to finish it up. She wasn't perfect, but she was sturdy again. A perfect steed to carry us into battle. After just one day of slaughter, we already had to retire our magnificent new katana. Sometimes the strangest things happen though and from the luck we profited. A second and third katana awaited us on the battlefield today, glorious. The beautifully sharp edged blades could cleanly slice through almost any foe, and will always be my favorite weapon of choice. Perhaps it was a statement from fate that we crossed paths with so many katanas, or maybe a mere coincidence. But either way, we were grateful to have the keen blades become our allies in this unforgiving world and guide us forward through the hordes that endanger us. It was the morning of August 13th. While sleep was still elusive, we utilized the early morning hours to clean up the haphazard hair growing all over our heads. It had been almost 90 days here in the heart of the chaos. We started to collect trophies from the defeated mutants, certain oddities to liven up the homestead and remind us of our adventures so far. When the hour of the sloth approached, we made our way back out into the city streets. The clue about guns in a car were false. Either Natalie was lied to, or someone beat us to them. Either way, we needed to press on. Here we stand, gloriously victorious. The art museum was now under our direct control. All immediate threats surrounding her have been completely eliminated. 
At just under 90 days, we had accumulated an astounding 2774 kills to reach the end of Natalie's final request, not including fire kills. As our final prize, we captured a throne to top our kingdom and ultimately bring us into a cultured, civilized world. We may eventually put a roof over top of it, but for now we could enjoy watching over our kingdom every morning and evening in style, atop a porcelain throne in the sky. What the hell are you doing out here? Three. What the hell are you... No! 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 If you enjoyed the content and want to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe button. A like, favorite, or share is also greatly appreciated. If you have a suggestion for a future challenge, please let me know about it down below or by joining the Discord. Thanks and have a wonderful one.